Hello and welcome to the Coffin Lounge Podcast, Episode Five. I am here, or I guess I should say, I am your host, Vampire Kitten. I am here with Jessica Loveless, the Vampire Witch. Can you tell us a little bit about what you do? I am a small business owner that runs a online witch shop, for lack of a better descriptor. Um, I sell altar supplies and my artwork, and I do spell work and readings for. A host of lovely clients and then outside of that I am kind of a, a leader of sorts in the vampire community I run a vampire coven that has 16,000 members worldwide wow. we have smaller group that has around 500 members that's based around my work as the vampire witch and sharing my spell work and magic and stuff like that and then I have um, a local house that caters to the mob town halo which is the Baltimore Maryland area very cool the condensed version <laughs> so you you have your your hands full a lot um do you, how do you i guess my first question is how do you keep up with all that that's a damn good question i'm not sure <laughs> uh coffee uh adhd multitasking hyper focus superpowers oh, um a really supportive partner that really helps me with all of this as well. I wouldn't be able to do it without him. Um, but otherwise, it's a lot. <laughs> you, you sound very I'm, busy all the time. I am. <laughs> um, so I guess let's let's kind of break it down. So what is what what got you started as the vampire witch? Like what how did that come to be? Like was the paganism part first the or the witchcraft part first and then the vampirism or did, were you in the vampire community and then you switched out and or combined the two it kind of naturally happened together when i i awakened awakening is when you figure out that you're a vampire um <laughs> i was totally gonna ask you to explain that so i'm so glad that you did because we've had yeah, a couple um, of vampire guests but we haven't like deep dived into vampirism probably until this episode like okay so so yeah awakening is just a pe most people know what a spiritual awakening is a vampire awakening is essentially just the same sort of situation but when you realize that you are part of the vampire community for whatever reason so that happened for me very very young around, around 12 13 and i also started practicing witchcraft around the same age so I had like this big giant awakening of my spiritual side and my vampire side at the same time. And because of that, my path the entire time has been very interwoven. My vampire side and my witch side were never two separate things, right. even though that was very controversial at one point in time in community history. Um, but because of that, the vampire witch didn't come until much later, a couple of years ago, honestly, um, when I started my business, I knew I kind of had to brand myself as the head of the business as one does whatever and i didn't really have a fancy name for myself i didn't have like i don't like a moniker or anything so i was like well i'm a vampire and a witch so we put them together heard her the vampire witch brilliant <laughs> so i like, just kind of ran with it <laughs> i'm vampire kitten so i get it right <laughs> <laughs> it was like it was literally an aol screen name like I'm dating myself. I mean, I'm so <laughs> immortal. I don't know what you're talking about. AOL, what is that? That's so new. No, um, it was my it was my AOL screen name, and there were numbers on the end of it. But I have since removed the numbers, and right. I was going by it for so long that I'm just like, well, I guess I'm the vampire kitten now. So, Perfect. you know, I I totally understand. We get trapped with <laughs> within the things that we've done to ourselves. <laughs> right it, it was just easy like when i was branding there the blank witch was just like a very popular combination for branding and i was like well nobody has the vampire witch what i do is project witchcraft that is very painted with the vampire paintbrush like it's it just it is what it is so i went with it and it worked <laughs> so so going back, let's since I made a joke about immortality because and I would like to mention that that is a joke. I don't think that <laughs> so because some people take things way too seriously and literally even though it was obviously a joke. Um, <laughs> so, yes, and physical immortality is not real. I'm so sorry, friends. Um, 
so go away touching a little bit about that when people awaken it's usually like a kind of spiritual awakening but the vampire community as a whole is not what like the layman thinks it is it everybody thinks oh vampires are the immortal movie scary blood-sucking creatures when in reality the vampire community is a subculture of people who do energy work at its base level could you Especially. explain a, yeah so could you explain a little bit about i guess your experience with the vampire community and uh, a little bit about how you got involved in your local community sure um <laughs> my experience with the vampire community when i was young i was i was talking about my awakening so young because i was so young there was limited info it was early 2000s and the community then was not what it is today and because i was so young it's not we don't usually we're not supposed to deal with teenagers nope. it's just nobody under 18 right just you. because of the subject matter and how sketchy it can be and just so on and so forth but because i was so young i found a couple websites uh drink deeply and dream was my gateway into that... <laughs> How do you even, is that still it's, around it is it's still up you can still find it Whoa. Um, but that oh, was man. my gateway into learning about the community when i was very young and i kind of soaked in all the information that i could um at my age and then i kind of put it on the back burner and kind of just kept that in the back of my mind and practiced witchcraft and whatnot um until i was much older i didn't get into the greater vampire community until my mid-20s and um Things I had missed a lot of history. Things were quite interesting when I came around in 2015. Um, I don't know. <laughs> no, I, 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 no, no, no. You're you're fine. I totally, I, I get it. Like I kind of had gone through some similar things myself. Like, but if you were under the age of 18 at all, like nobody would talk to you. Yeah. And so, like, I had written a few things, and I had been involved with the community as like somebody who wasn't 18 yet and so a lot of people tended to kind of come and talk we talk to each other you know message boards whatever because that's who we had we had our our age group right. um the fact that you're men mentioning drink De deeply and dream there was sanguinarius mm -hmm. um you know there was oh gosh there were so many um vampire church was one of the first ones where i actually met people who were generally just kind of helping me point me in the right direction but not like really getting involved with me which is totally understandable i get it um but it's really nice when teenagers kind of take it upon themselves to sort of find each other and kind of help guide each other um speaking of something i i just re i realized something wild within the last couple of days have you been on theory and tiktok I don't know. Do you, you know what theory, no, but theorians that, are, right? Yeah, but the, the, the phrase theory and TikTok kind of it's, frightens me a little bit. It's kind of wild. And <laughs> I, I encourage you to go look at it. Um, I'm scared. Yeah, uh, I'm not going to say anything more than that, but I, <laughs> I encourage you to go check out theory and TikTok. Very interesting. I haven't actually been on Vampire Community TikTok. So that might be interesting to go look at too. You should check that out. <gasps> I stay away from so much stuff. I just don't want to like you guys do you, you know. <laughs> uh, TikTok is one of those I I got on TikTok early like during the pandemic and got 11,000 followers randomly and then never touched it again. <laughs> it's it's like... a great I think it's a great platform if you're trying to like grow your social media for sure. Right. Yeah, I need to get back. I just caught myself. I have a, a me being the Leo female that I am likes to cuss people out, and then I realize I'm cussing out a 12 year old, and I'm like, ah, oh, fuck. So oh, man. <laughs> it's Let a me great tell you, lesson I, in patience. <laughs> I wish I could block like underage accounts. Like I've been having this issue where most of my shitty comments are coming from like obviously teenagers or Kids. children yeah and so i'm just like cool um thank you you're not supposed to see my content anyway thanks friend <laughs> like, why are you here <laughs> right how did you why does this end up on your for you page that's not good um yeah. where are your parents <laughs> <laughs> who's watching you go get your capri sun and sit down <laughs> like seriously um, though <laughs> 
So let's let's go back to vampire community. Local, how did you okay. get involved in your local community? Obviously after you were 18. <laughs> yeah, I actually, um, once I had came back to the vampire community and really got involved in the greater community online, offline, um, my local area didn't actually have a local community. I lit beacons. I was like, if you're around, say something, because I'm about to start doing shit. And if you want to have a say in it, please, like, let me know. I'm not trying to step on any toes. And I, like, threw that all over the internet everywhere. I was like, come out, come out, where you, wherever you are. Right. Shit. So nobody did. Um, by the time I started what we now call the Mob Town Halo, it was me and two other people. Um it was another guy who was supposed to be the leader of the area, but he ended up moving to Delaware and kind of just didn't do anything. So right. I took it upon myself to kind of try to wrangle the vamp cats. Ah, vampire kitten. Ha ha ha. That is so, so me. <laughs> try to wrangle me. <laughs> Let me tell right. you. <laughs> That's probably about. It's an adventure. Uh, I'm sure. Right? <laughs> Trying to get the vamps together is an adventure. So actually identifying with the vampire kitten trope. No, I'm not. I'm not wrangling. <laughs> but no, it was around like 2017 is when I really started trying for the local community. And it was three of us at the time. Um, and it's like trying to pull teeth, trying to get people together. <laughs> It's really difficult, but over time and just consistent effort, uh, the Montown Halo group has around 80 people in it now. Um, for a couple years, I used to run something called the Vampire Court of Baltimore. I was the queen of the court. Um, I got I think, rid of that, though. That didn't work out. <laughs> I think it's interesting that people don't understand that people aren't... When they say king or queen or lord, lady, whatever, it's literally a title that kind of shows that you are in charge. I don't think that people are, in like, trying to be kings and queens. Like, that's just not how it is. I'm sure there's there's some <laughs> that are. And that I know that there are some. But most of the time, when a house or a halo or a coven or whatever uses those terms, it's just because, A we fall back on vampire tropes because it's mm -hmm. hilarious and B and B like there needs to be some sort of hierarchy. And the only thing that really exists for that is the vampire trope. Yeah. So I think it's interesting that we still use those things. I mean, there's, we could change it, but at this point it's so now ingrained in the community that yeah. I think we're I have opinions on that just from my own personal experience of living that and watching everyone around it? me i mean if you want to talk about it, Let's talk about it. it. okay uh, well so <laughs> i was very <sighs> when i got to the community I, I have always been a very passionate person and loud about you know doing right and being you know having integrity and honor and things like that so I got roped into becoming the queen of the court of Baltimore and running Baltimore, and that was all well and good. And for about five years, I championed for people's ability to exist with, ever, with whatever label or title or anything that works for them in their community and their little unit. And that's right. why I held on to the queen title for so long. But sitting, first of all, I hated it. I fucking hate, like, the idea of being called royalty makes my skin crawl. That's just not who I am. I did it because that's what... I was supposed to do um but sitting there a good 80 percent of people that adopt these royal titles have ego that it drives goes, it yeah it goes to the and end eventually it as goes well. it, it either it starts noble or they have these noble things that they project onto the internet but they're really kind of douchey <laughs> and i've noticed it's it's dying down in popularity now that the MTV circus that was the Vampire Court of Austin has died down. Um, a lot of people tried to emulate that, and I admittedly found the greater community because of that. I have existed so long with, okay, the vampire part is part, it's part of me, but I mean, I put it on the back burner. I didn't know community, and the next thing I know, there's these motherfuckers on MTV, and I'm like... So When did this get so can, popular? <laughs> can we talk about this? Because the last thing I remember... Um, so... There, there are a couple of vampires in media. There's a couple of, uh, like, hooked on the looks or what are those, truly does them now, where they kind of highlight people. There's also, um, back when I was first starting out in the community, we had Mad Madhouse. Yes. <laughs> Tom Henry. 
Right. So that was all we had. And then there were a mm-hmm. couple of like documentaries about like New York vampires. There was uh-huh. like some other underground like goth club kind of stuff. But there wasn't really vampires in the media. And if there was, they were very much not prevalent and made fun of mm-hmm. a lot. So yeah. I I personally had I don't know anything about the Court of Austin show. Is was there can you explain like what what was it called? Because like, I don't even know. It was an episode, it was two episodes of MTV's True Life. True Life. Okay. That makes yeah. that tracks now. Okay. I was mm-hmm. like, I don't remember there being a vampire. No, show. they didn't have their own show. It was Got two different it was it. I want respect for my sect. And and then I think it was an actual episode based on vampires that okay. they did all right that's what i was wondering because i was like i don't recall there being another show and then i'd also like to mention um this is not promotion uh i just i think it's i mean i guess it is kind of promotion but they didn't ask me to do this i think it's really interesting have you seen that Mich- what michelle belanger is doing yes so new blood looks very, really good yeah super stoked that that kickstarter made it i am really excited too and i hope we get a really really good like paranormal slash vampire show out of it but Mm -hmm. um i'll make sure i put that in the description too so people can find new blood because i think that you all should subscribe on youtube and go check it out it looks really good so anyway let's go back sorry sorry uh (laughs) you were part of you were queen in this house i was queen of the court Court. and then i so in 2017, I became queen of the court of Baltimore, but in 2018, I started my own house because I already had known at that point that the queen part of my life was a temporary fixture. I was not going to be that forever, and I knew that, and I was kind of preparing for that. Um, so your so house I started my house is. So, uh, I'm sorry. I'm trying to. I'm trying to. But I got notes. I'm trying to understand. House of Omnia Corvus. Yes. Okay. Just want to make sure that's the house, right? Yep. House okay. Omnia Corvus is the house. Um, all Raven. We are all very Raven, Crow, Corvid gang spirits together. I love it. <laughs> the concept Omnia Corvus, all Raven. We. I am going into like my personal practice. I am a witch, but I also kind of have an Omniist view. Like everything tracks in a way. Everything I kind of believe in a way that most things are just a giant game of telephone bait that are culturally biased for their area and their resources and you know, their stories and whatnot, but it's all kind of telling the same thing. So I have this Omniist like open to whatever use what works kind of view. So Omnia Corvus, we take all the wisdom that the ravens bring, sort of like how Hugin and Munin are thought and memory, and they see all the things and they bring the wisdom. So that's kind of where Omnia Corvus comes from. Um, I like it. But we got started. Um, I just kind of, like I said, I knew the court thing wasn't going to work. I used it as kind of like a public platform to draw people out of the community and be like, hey, we're here. We're loud. We have this vampire court. If you're vampire, vampire adjacent in Baltimore, we're like, hey, check us out. Come play with us. We do like goth picnics every year, twice a year. Uh, we still do those, even though the court's not around, but we were doing like museum visits and going to like state parks and just kind of just doing made ups to get to know each other and kind of drag people out and really get the community rolling because there was nothing here. So that's kind of what the Vampire Court of Baltimore did. I dissolved that last year. Okay. Was there um, a reason so, why? Hmm? I said, was what? there a particular reason why? Or... Um, my just... focus... I just... I couldn't do the royalty bullshit. Like, I got tired of dealing with people. Like, there was this expectation that I was supposed to be queenly and ladylike. And I was supposed to be good to all the public and my whole kingdom. And, like... Fuck that. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I your, mean, like, your whole, I guess, goals changed. All your goals changed. Yeah, my goals changed. My view of the community changed. I grew. Um, I took off some of the rose-colored glasses that I had when I got here about unity and kumbaya and we're all going to get along and we're all going to do whatever because that's not really how anything works even though people wish it did i don't know that sounds really bleak i don't mean no, to no, sound no. so bleak. <laughs> you're, you're not no actually no you're you're 100 factual i actually i left the vampire community for a really really long time because i was personally tired of it myself i yeah. was tired of the drama i was tired of hearing about all of the 
very terrible things that people that terrible people were doing uh, under the guise of the community i was tired of people being shitty to each other for no reason mm-hmm. because people had different opinions on how things like these are end of the day this path and any path that you take in life is your own personal path and whatever you believe despite what anybody else thinks is what you feel and believe in and nobody's going to change that you mm-hmm. can't say oh well your paganism is wrong or your meditation is wrong or whatever is wrong mm-hmm. there is a generalization of what that is to everyone and it's up right. to people to take that path and make it their own which is why i'm like eclectic pagan i'm a mix of a mm-hmm. bunch of things so it's you can't tell me that what I'm doing is wrong when you don't understand my path because you aren't living it. Yeah, for so, sure. So, the wayism in the vampire community, it used to be so bad. It still is, but people have kind of lost steam post COVID. I'm really happy about that. <laughs> Same. Same. But uh, yeah, that's, that's essentially, I, I just stopped catering to everyone in their shitty opinions and i kind of have separated a little not really separated because i'm also very loud and like i am here like i'm gonna say what i'm gonna say but i also i have carved out like my house is here my coven is here if you want to hear what i have to say i'm over here like if you want to be safe to discuss it you know discuss things in a practical down-to-earth manner i'm over here if you want to talk like you're an immortal cousin of dracula then I'm going to kick you out and t- tell you to eat rocks. Like, I curate my <laughs> space. I have my own little space. I just can't do that whole, everybody kumbaya, and I'm going to accept everybody for whatever they say. Because, like, no, some people are full of shit and they're assholes. I want nothing to do with that. <laughs> I understand that immensely. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and honestly, we don't have to get along with everybody. Like, end of yeah. the day, our practices are our practices, and if you want to be on the journey, cool, but if you're going to be a dickhead about it, let's, like, just not talk. Let's not hang out. I'm yeah. cool with that, too. I don't For need sure. you in my life making me miserable. Yes. <laughs> Some people feed on that shit, learn. though. Some people feed on that shit, and that's how they do their practices, and I'm just like, you can go somewhere else with that. <laughs> Colin Robinson has been the greatest gift to vampire media because we now all have a character that fully explains that episode of him with the multiple computers around feeding on the internet drama. I'm yeah. like, oh my god, I can name seven people so right good. off the top of my head. So good. I, I, he's definitely like, oh god, Colin Robinson was probably, I love Matt Berry. Let me tell you, what we do in the shadows is an incredible show. Yeah. It's well written. It's super funny. It's a little cheesy, but like, it's cheesy in a good way in that yeah. it's really fun to watch and the stories really, the characters, the characters just absorb you. Like you want to know a little mm-hmm. bit more about them every single episode. Colin threw me for a loop. I didn't think I was going to like him. I was like, who the fuck is this guy? And then the more we were going through the season, I'm like, Colin's probably the superior character in this whole thing. Like he, <laughs> he, and like I said, I love, I love Matt Berry. I, Matt Berry yeah. is like the whole reason why I really started watching the show in the first place. He's incredible in the IT crowd. And I just, I just adore him. And <laughs> the whole thing is fantastic. I'm so happy we have amazing vampire media these days. Yeah. I just, I really want my Blade TV show or new movie to come out. Um, they've been working is on that. Is it coming out? Is it? I heard it's been postponed. It's going oh, everything's waves. postponed again. But I yeah. heard they, they were having like director issues or something. My partner is like big in the nerd world, so he like keeps me abreast to all it's, the things that are happening. <laughs> it's been go off. It's stop and go and stop and go and stop and go. Just like blood, uh, bloodlines too. We're stop and go and stop and go and stop yeah. and go and that. Um, but I'm hoping in the next couple of years we'll get our shit together and actually be able to watch those but um there have been some really good things coming out or media with vampires like i'm looking forward to the new nosferatu um mm-hmm. there was renfield was really good oh my gosh nick cage's dracula see that i need to nick cage's dracula he's so good he's so fun Is to it? watch oh yeah i loved it nice. the main character i'm like eh, nick cage's dracula yeah okay i okay. can see it yeah <laughs> Um, nice. But so since we've kind of veered off, what's your favorite vampire movie? 
Well, actually, we'll do both. We'll do vampire and witch movie. What are you? What are you two? And you can give me a top three if you can't decide. I was gonna I have say a top that because like, like favorite vampire movie, it's like there's different ones because like comedic would be the what we do in the shadows movie, and then like serious. Mm. I do. I am a slut for the first couple underworld movies. Oh yeah, <laughs> like it's terrible. I always forget about I love about all them. terrible vampire movies because like I love Queen of the Damned and everybody hates it. I can appreciate how bad of a movie it is, but it's like if people can love terrible horror movies, I can love my terrible vampire. Movie. Oh my gosh, are you part of the? Please tell me, are you part of the the Twilight shit posting group? I have act, I'm not, but I've actually never watched any of the Twilight. Oh, it's so, so good. You gotta. First of all, you have to watch Twilight. <laughs> Just do it. I know you don't want to. You want to watch a terrible vampire movie though. Right? <laughs> um, I we used to get. I, I was explaining this in another podcast. We used to go to the midnight showings. We'd go have dinner and drinks and we'd just be wasted at the theater just watching Twilight at midnight with my friends. It was amazing. But um, I read most of the books um, because that's... I, I couldn't put... They were so bad. I couldn't put them down. Like, you know when you're like watching something and you're just like, it is just a train wreck that catches on fire and just takes out a car <laughs> and then it takes out a house and then it goes into a tornado and then the sharknado comes? That's literally Twilight. <laughs> it's like all that. It just, it just doesn't stop. <laughs> so, <That's> amazing. <laughs> so Twilight shit posting group, one of the best groups on Facebook. It's so good. Nice. Um, I mean, the, the movie themed shit posting groups are always great. I'm in the Emotep mummy posting, which is fucking phenomenal. <gasps> oh no, I have to join that one. You'll have to send that yes. to me. <laughs> um, so, I think that bad vampire movies are amazing because we get bad vampire movies. Like I. There are some really good ideas in bad vampire movies, too, like that haven't been done in others. For my top three, I'd have to say it's uh, From Dust Till Dawn is my favorite. Salma Hayek as uh, Pen uh, Santanico Pandemonium. Mm -hmm. Oh, a goddess. She's just a goddess. And she still <laughs> looks amazing. I don't right. know if you've seen her lately. Um, love George Clooney in that. He's incredible. And then the uh, Lost Boys and mm -hmm. Interview with a Vampire. Those are my top Lost three. Lost Boys and Interview are always, like, in the rotation of my mm -hmm. top three. <laughs> and I like to throw Blade in there. The one with, uh, was it Trinity that had Ryan Reynolds on it? I think so, yeah. That, that's I the like that third one. one. Yeah. He basically Ryan Reynolds plays and Jessica Biel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that one's that, that one's not my favorite. I like the first one the best. I think it's yeah. very... I just love the feel of it. You know, like that neon rave 90s sort of like Vampire the Masquerade feel that it right. has. We don't have that much in vampire films anymore. True. I want some more vampire westerns. Can somebody get on that, please? Like, for real. I need more vampire... I watched the Wesley Snipe Gallo Walkers one and it was terrible. <laughs> like I want I want more vampire westerns like can we get more of those like it just seems like you would put those would be perfect together you know <laughs> a lot of sunlight in westerns there is but like <laughs> there's so many like cool creative ways you could come up with like traveling right you know or I don't know like by train you could do by like stagecoach coffin like make a whole stagecoach right, coming a coffin in the city at night right that could be so cool <laughs> i'm telling you um okay what's your favorite vampire tv show why am i why is what we do in the shadows the only one i can think of well i mean we got buffy <laughs> oh wait no there's a bunch of them i just uh, i actually never watched i tried to watch vampire diaries and something like as an adult watching vampires and high schoolers just does not move <laughs> in my brain <laughs> <laughs> I feel that. So I um, couldn't watch that. And I was also somebody I never watched. True Blood. I have to get on that. I watched the first uh, couple episodes. I have so, my ADHD for watching things is so bad. If I can't binge it in a day, I don't want it. Yeah. So, like, I need I, to go watch True Blood before everybody freaks out. Like, what? So now that we've both uh, veered off into some <laughs> nether region of the internet <laughs> and time and space, let's, let's bring it back down to earth a little bit. <laughs> what you had mentioned that your goals were uh, different and that's why you kind of sort of shuttered your house or coven. 
Um, I shot her the court. The court. I'm so yes. sorry. There's so and many no, names. It's totally fine. There's so <laughs> it's the sociology of like vampire culture and like the structures of these organizations. Such a confusing topic. Well, so there's no like yeah. There's no like standard. It's either. like oh <laughs> no. When it comes to creating them, there's definitely not a standard. But there is like I don't know. It's a very loose guidelines. <laughs> So, but um, as far as my goals, I guess the things have changed. I shuttered the court because I didn't want to cater to being like open to the entire everyone and just having the barrage right. of the entire community coming at me all the time as the queen. So I shut that down and kind of focused more on like a family unit. I am also, um, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but I'm an elder of a House O'Malley as well, which is one of the first houses that came out of, the, uh, one of the first independent houses that came out of the Gods of Halo in the 90s. Right. So I do a lot of work trying to work with my family, not only um, O'Malley, but my house is a bloodline extension of that house. And a bloodline, for anyone out there that wants to know what a bloodline is, it's basically just like a spiritual tie to a family it's kind of like a coven all being of the same lineage it's the same kind of concept so if anybody has any questions about that um but it's a lot of my goals have been focusing on my family lately trying to get us together and doing things like book clubs and classes and full moon rituals even though we do it mostly on zoom because we're all spread out through all the country but you know just creating bonds together with people that i'm close with and trying to lift us all up um and so we can all grow together and learn together like i'm trying to help some of my family members with their etsy businesses and stuff like that and just trying to like i said lift each other up in all sorts of uh facets but we're also hosting some events lately in the local area as well to try to get back out there into trying to wrangle the vamp cats again right um so I'm doing a vampire speakeasy at the end of September on full moon, the 29th. So that'll be fun. We're trying to get more like events that are very obviously created for vampires and anyone that is adjacent to the vampire community, which is goths, anyone that is open to us is welcome. But it's about time that our area has like a visible haven or event where our kind can come and be ourselves right so so speaking of that let's talk a little bit about your uh your i guess you do readings you have a store you I do have, all the things <laughs> uh you're a spiritual guide so mm -hmm. it looks like you've taken your what you were doing publicly and sort of reel it back in and sort of started creating like a huge business with this like how is that going it's going well um before covid i was a security manager and i for a decently large event production company right. and through that i had to kind of gorilla psychiatrist a lot of people i don't know if you i know you have but um music festivals in the woods can get real interesting and people do a lot of interesting things and ingest things and they have crises. <laughs> I've been, let me tell you, I have been many a trip sitter yes. in my time. I am rave mom. Yeah, so I, that I always saw that I falls was, on me. I turned so I, rave mom into a profession when <laughs> I, I was rave mom in 18 and turned that into a security <laughs> career. Got tired of getting punched in the face at the bar. So when COVID. <laughs> that sounds terrible. I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, the sec event security <laughs> is like 90% looking real serious and 10% like getting punched by drunk people. That so awful. <laughs> and I worked at the bar that was directly across the street from Baltimore City's only casino that had a 24 oh, hour liquor no. license. So it was a grand old time. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> I don't but I learned a lot you. like I learned a lot about you know de-escalation and helping people in crisis through that experience so when COVID hit I decided I was and I lost my job like every you know most it, everybody almost, did yeah. I took my stimulus check and started an LLC and I was like I work for myself for the rest of my life from now on and right. I decided I was going to start I was making art already um, to cope with some things I was dealing with pre-COVID and I was like, I'll just sell art. And it started as me just selling art. And then 
I started realizing like, well, I've been giving people readings on the side for years. Like, why not throw that into that? Well, I thought, you know, being a witch is a valid path. Like there's plenty of people that have been, you know, professional witches that the, you know, the neighborhood witch has been a thing for thousands of years. Like oh, yeah. doing it on the digital age is, you know, it's just a lot more social media and marketing involved in today's time. Um, but yeah, it's been a really fulfilling path so far. It's been three years three years how many fucking years has it been since COVID? But yeah it's been about three years um I forgot <laughs> because i try to re- forget all of what but my COVID. sense of time is jacked up i think at this everybody's point now. yeah we don't <laughs> even know what uh, i was talking the other day um to my partner and i was like um has the year gone by like super fast this year and he's like yeah i was like we're already in august like mm-hmm. pretty much and I, I can't even believe how quick it's been going by. And I'm just yeah. like, oh, man, I've been hustling a lot this year. Um, but yeah, it our, I think our sense of time and our also our sense of what is important to us has changed so much in the last three mm-hmm. years. I think it's yeah. serious. Yeah, because COVID-19 was the end of 19. And yeah. so... But, um, how many well, vampires does it take to figure out how many years it's been? We... <laughs> 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 Two. Uh, uh, uh. Okay. <laughs> that was good. That was really good. <laughs> oh man. Um. Yeah. So. so <laughs> congratulations on starting your LLC. That's really important. Thanks. It's very exciting. You have so much going on. Um. When when people subscribe to your Patreon, for example, I mean, you've got all this other stuff going on. But when people subscribe, what do they get? Like what- it depends on the tier and i'm okay. actually about to rework some of that to add more but there is um you either get you all patrons get access to things that i write and i usually always post my things to patreon before i post anywhere else right. so all of my writings on magic or um updates about the adventures of that because I, I went to the house camper gather in ohio a couple months what, how many months has it been i don't even know a month or so ago two months something like that um, but I'm also going to New Orleans at the end of the year. Like I'm going to be posting all sorts of cool stuff for my travels. Um, there's also Vampire Witch Mail Club, which one of the things where you get these fancy cards from me every month. Oh, those are this cute. This one is a devil. Oh, that's super <laughs> cute. But I, it's I really love to send people things. I love snail mail. People don't get snail mail that's not bills, so it makes them really happy. I hear. Let me so send you, um, I'm send you some snail mail. Some of I my some uh, cool stuff. tiers include that. I also include. I'm getting ready to add spell work and readings to some of my higher tiers, um, because you can subscribe to my higher price tiers as sort of like a spiritual guidance subscription. So you that's get cool. readings with me directly. I'll give you spell work. Um, if you want to learn or um, practice something or like um, develop a skill of some sort, I can help you work through that. All sorts of stuff. I work one on one with people, basically. All, all of my patrons, I work one on one with to a certain degree. That's awesome. Um, yeah. So you are just <laughs> full of of surprises and fun. And, <laughs> um, I, I'm looking at your website and oh, geez, which one? The uh, Sanguis Lunarium. Oh, gotcha. Lun- Lunarum. Okay. Sanguis mm-hmm. Lunarum. And um, I'm looking on here, and it, this is just your general website, but I see something about you have appearances and stuff. What is the Coven of the Articulate, the Dark Gift Alliance? That is um, the Coven of the a Coven of the Articulate is a group in New Orleans, and the Dark Gift Alliance is a vamp- it's a vampire ball. Um, it is uh, it's actually the official after party for the Anne Rice Ball that happens okay. every year in um, New Orleans and they are doing like a, a witchy themed event this year and I will be hosting the opening ceremony for that event this year very so cool. that's very exciting it'll be my first time going to New Orleans first time doing an opening ceremony for a vampire ball So, well congratulations on that you have so much stuff happening right now <laughs> Also, what is, this is just the cutest little thing. Can we talk about the Musings of Blood? What is that? Yeah, so the Musings of the Blood is a, like, podcast that a friend of mine, Buck Agrios, and I are recording together. We have been talking about doing this for so long, but he lives in Australia and works a big boy job. And 
the time difference yeah i am regularly recording at 3 a.m but it works out perfect because i'm usually up that late anyway so mm -hmm. it's fine um but i love him to death he is somebody that um, him and i have worked together on some spiritual vampirism stuff um sort of kind of tailoring our experiences and he he's works in an ecstatic witchcraft sort of practice and it's very different than the usual ceremonial magic leanings of most vampire magic stuff right. so we're trying to articulate a more like ecstatic witchcraft based path or tool set i guess i should say because we're not trying to tell anybody like you have to do this in order to be a witch a vampire witch we're just like here are these tools that are different than what's already out there so what is the podcast about and when when it, it, exactly and when does it air like is it already out it is not already out yet i am fighting with adobe to figure out how to <laughs> do video editing so coming soon very soon hopefully what day is it thursday i'm hoping by next week our first episode will be out and then cool. we're going to record a few more episodes we want to have at least a few out before spooky season gets here right. um but it is about but basically just buck and i'm bullshitting about vampire culture vampire community media art myths basically whatever um he and i get together and we have all these great conversations about all of these things when we're not recording so we were like hey let's get together and record a podcast because once upon a time in the vampire community, there was, albeit very polarizing, but still a lot of information that was coming out from a lot of sources, um, a lot of opinions that people could read and form their own. And that is kind of lacking these days. Right. And the way people um, consume information is a lot different in today's society. So we figured, you know, why not have these conversations, put our takes out there for people to listen to and just have that stream of information if they want it. Right. Um, I think that's really awesome. Well, send me the links and I'll make sure that it gets put into this link. Uh, that totally way people can find it on you know going forward for sure we still have to we're going to make a facebook page and an instagram page like we're slow rolling all of the the digital footprint for it but that will be out soon right that takes forever i'm telling you starting a starting a business or new pages or whatever you have to do everything <laughs> you have to do like tiktok and and twitter mm -hmm. and youtube and facebook and it just it i'm takes already so doing it for so many things i'm like ah. i know that's why when i started this podcast i'm like do i start over or do i put everything under vampire kitten i was like uh let's start over yeah <laughs> like <laughs> so um well that's really cool i'm actually looking forward to hearing that how how uh, how long are the episodes gonna be you think um i think our first one is an hour give or take i think we're shooting for Buck says he wants to shoot for half an hour to 45 minutes, but I do not foresee us <laughs> getting less than an hour. But we'll see. So anywhere, half an hour to an hour. Okay. We're not trying to go past an hour. We don't want it to be, like, too long and drown out forever. But Right. I it's you got to find that sweet spot. You'll, you'll yeah. find it. Um, we'll figure it out. I think sure. this, is a, this is the first time for me doing anything like this. So it's super learning curve, but I'm excited about it. So I want to go back a little bit. Um, okay. We talked about our favorite vampire movies, and I want to hear okay. about your favorite witchcraft movies. <laughs> what are your favorites? What are your favorite uh, favorite witchcraft movies? I would I put you. On I the spot. feel bad for being a terrible cliche, but The Craft is just a classic. <sighs> I feel and... like The Craft everybody loves, though. That's I know. Like, it's not. It's not it's a cliche. Like... It's it's kind of one of the more real adaptations of like. I think that's With, why. Like, the coven, like, yeah. mentality, like, how people get together and sort of practice together. I think it's a and good example. And the shadow example. side of it as well with Nancy going right. off the rails. And it's like, of course, it's not going to be quite like that in real life. But let a little power go to your head and you might right. pull the Nancy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm going to use that forever now. Hey, yeah. why are you being a Nancy today? You're being such a Nancy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, nobody will know what I'm talking about, but it's fine. <laughs> um, I'd have to say my I have I have a comfort film and it is kind of silly, but whenever I'm like feeling down or well, I have two comfort films. Whenever I'm feeling down or I'm lonely or I'm sad or I'm angry, 
I almost always, 100% of the time, will put on Practical Magic. Because that movie, I know it's so cheesy, <laughs> but that movie, for some reason, makes me feel so good inside. Like, I don't know what it is. I think it's just, like, they solve all their problems, they figure it out, and then they're, like, good to go. And then, right. true love, uh, duh. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, you know? So, I right. love Practical Magic. And my other one is The Love Witch. Okay. I love The Love Witch. I think it's really well shot. Um, have you seen that? I have not. Okay, so the director shoots it like a classic sort of 70s exploitation type film. And I don't know how into like film you are, but like all, her whole body of work, the director, I can't remember her name off the top of my head. I actually went and found her other movie, uh, Viva, because I loved it so much. There is... It's the storyline is terrible. There's nothing good about it. But the way it is filmed, it's like a 21st century retelling of a 70s uh, like witch exploitation film. Interesting. <laughs> it's very cool. Uh very worth a watch and the, the aesthetic of it and the the I guess the makeup and the wardrobe beautiful. Just even if you just okay. google love witch, you'll be like, "Wow, this looks gorgeous." Okay. Um I have to check that out. It. Yeah. So, speaking of witchcraft, I am actually very curious. What is it like being a full-time witch? Like, you are literally doing what people have done for centuries. <laughs> like, how, how, does, how does that work with your, like, current, like, life, I guess, in general? Like, what, is, what does your day look like as a full-time witch? It's a little wild. Um, <laughs> my day, honestly, being a full-time witch is a lot, like, doing diet therapy for a lot of people um there are of course things that i won't touch because i am not a licensed therapist i will right. tell people hey you need to go speak to a medical professional or a professional therapist for these things however the bulk of people that come to me for help are in some sort of crisis whether or not it's a tiny crisis that they need help with or something crazy going on in their life every right. day i am fielding messages from people that are in a personal crisis and need help and it's very exhausting yet rewarding work and it takes a lot of personal protection and boundaries to be able to handle all of that but right. aside from that it's cool like teenage me would be so proud right now um you know i wake up i answer messages i post you know every business has to do their social media work and a witch is no different so i am you know a slave to social media but aside from that, like, I set up my altar twice a week and I get to paint candles and, like, talk to my spirit allies and work magic for people more than once, you know, a bunch of times a week. And that's my job. And that is the coolest thing ever. It's just not an easy job either. I traded downtime for work that I like. <laughs> I don't yep. have downtime. Every waking moment of my life I spend on my business or my community in some way and of you know 90 percent of my energy is given to others through this work and it's tough it's hard you have to know your own boundaries you have to schedule yourself your own spiritual self-care um you can get lost in giving everything to everyone else and leave yourself depleted so and because there's no work-life balance because my life is my work and i work from home and my altar is at home i have to be very careful to not completely drain myself to the point where I'm like I can't give anything else so it's really rewarding but really difficult I can see that that I that sounds draining to be honest with you <laughs> I I have I have a I'm like a extrovert uh, introverted extrovert like I love being outside I love talking with people I love socializing but at the end of the day when my batteries are dead I'm just like oh no please don't talk to me for two days Yep. So like I I'm totally, the same way. <laughs> I totally understand. And then like work life balance at a doing so, things at home is so hard cuz people always say you never work a day in your life doing what you love, but they don't what they don't tell you about that is when you're doing what you love, you tend to work more and burn yourself out faster. Mm -hmm. um, especially if you have a remote job or you work from home or you run your own business, you will work 60 hours a week versus the normal 40 and mm -hmm. you won't always get paid for it you know what yeah. i mean so like it's tough running your own business like i totally understand that i 
I've been running mine forever. And now that I have time to focus on it, I'm just like, man, I'm burnt. Like this week alone, yeah. I kind of had like a really weird off week. But I'm telling you, like, it's just it's a roller coaster ride, but it's satisfying, I guess. Yeah. Um, so I, I totally understand that. Literally, uh, that is that is really cool. Um, I think that is amazing that you are now doing this. And also 13 year old you at, would be so proud of you. <laughs> yeah she is she is very happy with life right now <laughs> i uh i thought about that a couple of weeks ago i was just like man if my younger self could have seen me today um my younger self would have been like oh she's so cool right like... yeah i mean even six years like six seven years ago me would be elated to see that this is the trajectory that things have gone because like when i first got to the the community of the bc um I was still running raves and like being the security captain save a of the rave festival. So <laughs> I'm sorry. That it was a terrible I didn't time. To do that right when you were drinking. Terrible time to take a drink. Oh my gosh. That's hilarious though. <laughs> but you're not wrong. But, raves are But yeah, um... so like it's weird to say that COVID changed my life for the better because not everybody can say that, but and it's kind of a weird concept. Like, yeah, the country shut down and everybody got sick and my life has changed dramatically for the better. I am better mental health. I have like, just all the changes have been fantastic. I do like, like you said, there is no work-life balance. Like most people with jobs, they're like, I hate my fucking job. I go to work eight hours and then I come home, but then you get to come home and not think about work for a little while. Right. And while that rinse and repeat really fucking blows, I never have that I'm off work, I have downtime. And if right. I try to give myself that downtime, I'm also I'm often guilting myself for it while it's happening. So like that, it's it's kind of a toxic work life situation. But at the same time, I am very happy with what I'm doing. So it's a trade that I was willing to make, and I made consciously. So, so I think it's I definitely think it's baby steps to your own time, your own personal time. I was doing things back to back to back to back to back. And what was happening is I was just so exhausted by the end of the day. I was like, I have no time for myself. So I have little things that I do. Like, I'll do my nails. And sometimes, like, I started mm -hmm. learning how to do the dip and, like, the gel and all that stuff. Right. That takes hours. Hours. Mm -hmm. That's my time to go, okay, this is something for me. I'm going to work on this creative project for myself that is going to be mm -hmm. something I'm going to enjoy for the next two weeks. And I'm going to watch some crappy horror movies. And this is what I do. So, like, I have realized within this last year this year this last year alone i have kind of come to this conclusion that while i am working hard i also need to take better care of myself yeah so i think it's important i used to go to do five things in a day i've cut that down to two things in a day two major projects a day if i don't get them done they can carry over till the next day um at, but like at the end of the day i think it's important that we find as people who work from home and as people who run our own businesses we need to find that balance and mm -hmm. a major part of that is boundaries people have no idea how many boundaries i've had to put up in the last year because people were just taking and taking and taking and mm -hmm. taking from me and so when i laid out boundaries first of all people didn't like that second of all right. It's not, I can't give my whole 100% to you. If I give 100% to you, I have no percent for me. So I, I totally agree with that. And it's just like people who are listening that run their own business, I hope that you take the most important advice, advice that I could give somebody as a business owner, take time for yourself. For sure. Like, like you have to. Clients will still be there in an hour after you've had your meal. Like right. they, they will still be there in the morning after you've gone out and had a date and mm -hmm. ate some food and like took some time for yourself. Like, right. yeah, because I it's... did the same thing. I had to do the same boundary process because people will take and take and take and take. And they don't mean like, they don't mean to do it. They don't, they can only come to you from their perspective and they only have their stream of consciousness. So they have no freaking clue how many other people are coming to you with your, their handout and how exhausting that is. Like you right. see the depression memes where, or not memes with the commercials. It was like a, a antidepressant commercial where it's like they, they're colored and every time they touch somebody, every time oh they gosh. do something good for somebody, they Isn't drain, like, the color drains from them. Like and the that's Zoloft exactly commercials? what it's like. I think it is a Zoloft commercial. Okay, it was a little, he was like a little dot. 
Yeah, what there was the blob dude. I oh, think the blob there's a blob. Dude. Yeah, the blob <laughs> dude. And then there was also there was one where it was a, a cartoon of a guy. I can't. Uh, I don't know if that was a Zola no, commercial no, no. or not. Oh, I, I know which one you're talking about. Yeah, I mean, they're just <laughs> taking all the color out of him. Yeah, I know yeah, exactly. But, but it's just a... like that as a business owner, like especially mm-hmm. as somebody if you're providing a, a comforting service or like or anything, it doesn't even matter what you're doing. But right. from my perspective as the witch, who I am, there to kind of comfort people, give people readings when they need help, give people spell work when they're in crisis. Like it's really hard to hold those boundaries when you also have empathy for people's situations. And I right. find that good people that run small businesses can get, get taken advantage of because they want to give, they want to help, and people will pull on your heartstrings, but then you're suddenly left depleted because so many people are coming at you with these stories and you want to help them, and sometimes you just can't help everybody. Right. Absolutely right. <laughs> I'm telling you, small business owners, listen up, because this is, this is the stuff that you learn after you start your business. Mm-hmm. You don't know it before, and then you le- you learn as you go along that you just have to find your balance and it's so hard and it doesn't make you a bitch to have boundaries no people not start a, to make you feel all. bad as well for not catering to them at the moment and they're like jump 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 and it's like no oh no well you're a bitch <laughs> exactly. cool <laughs> Th- thanks glad glad we could have this talk i appreciate good, yeah, you good talk thanks goodbye <laughs> um so okay that is really cool that you are doing all this stuff. I I think it's incredible. You've got you've got a lot on your plate. Where can people find you? I am on basically all social medias. If you type in the Vampire Witch, Vampire spelled with a Y, you can find me. You can Google it. You can find me. But I also have um, a link at sanguislunarum dot com slash linktree. You can find basically all of my contact and then some on that page. Um, Facebook is the best way to get a hold of me if you want to actually contact me and talk to me for anything. Find me facebook.com slash the vampire witch. Yeah, I think that's Do you have any releases or anything that you're talking about that are that are, are coming out in your store? Uh, my store I am actually because I am uh, a Leo. We're having big Leo sale for August at my store. Um, Cute. which is uh, I think it's etsy.com slash shop slash the vampire, which you can also find that on my link tree or I, you know, whore it out on my Facebook page all the time. In the description below. It'll be in the description. Click it. Yeah, down there. Click it. (laughs) Um, So what are... What are some of I'm I'm actually looking at your store. What are some of the some of the top selling things that you have in your store? So product wise, it's I have my yes no coins. People love those. Do I have I do have one right here. It's the it's got yes on one side, no on the other. So if Very you don't cute. feel like making a decision, you don't fucking have to. Um, <laughs> I also have I make um, they are little openable acorn. Oh, uh, lockets, I guess. It, the the acorn top those. comes off, and I yeah. burn um, the algae's rune, but I put dots on it so it looks like a crow footprint. And then it comes with a little tiny Mjolnir inside of it. So it's a little so protection cute. and strength um, amulet. Those are my two top selling physical products. And then I have my spell work, I have um, group spells have been really popular. People love those because I um, each client gets a number and I number the candles so they know which one is theirs. But then I take video clips and like I have, I get my little bit like videographer itch in because I make these cute little videos where I like give tours of the altar while it's burning and it's all pretty and I put music on it so I'll, I'll post a whole bunch of those in my um vampire witch society group so everybody can see it while it's happening and get updates while the spell work is happening and people love to just be involved That's cool. um so I do those I do those for the dark moon the full moon and then I'll have like some random topic ones like we just did a, a money drawing spell two days ago cool and then I do some read the the blind reading is m- my least favorite, but everyone else's most favorite. <laughs> I have a love hate relationship with that. Um, the blind readings are you know you don't want to give me any information. You don't have a topic. You just want to know what the cards say. Um, have at it. I personally don't like those as much because while yes it's a psychic reading i'll pull any message out of the cards you want but if you give me a little background i can get so much deeper into the details if you just give me a little bit of a clue i'm always like if you want to test my psychic abilities you want a parlor trick you want to see what i can pull out of my ass by all means it'll still be accurate however 
<laughs> you right. give me a little bit of an idea of like what you're dealing with, what thoughts you have in your head, why you've come to me for the reading. I can really get into the minute details of what the cards are really saying about your situation. All right. Well, Jessica, thank you so much for joining me on the Coffin Lounge today. I appreciate it. Um, do you have anything else to say? Uh, just thank you so much for having me. It's been a great time. And thanks for joining us, everyone. Absolutely. Uh, thank you for joining the po Coffin Lounge episode five. We are available on YouTube, uh, Spotify, and iTunes. Make sure you like and subscribe, follow, and uh, I will see you for the next one. Bye, everybody.